Hello, all glory to Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So, last video I talked a bit about the spiritual powers and how I thought that the the gods in the Bible, the false gods, they're actually spiritual powers. So I just wanted to clarify that a little bit, uh, what I mean by that. So, yeah, we know our enemy is not flesh and blood. And uh, yeah, I talked about how God has a plan to replace the fallen spiritual powers, uh, the, the rebellious spiritual powers, you know, Satan and his angels uh, with the church. So yeah, I talked about how the gods, the heathen nations worship actual spiritual beings. So, this is a list of pagan gods in the Bible. And, you know, a lot of gods mentioned in the Bible. A lot of the false gods, I should say, the names of these false gods. I don't think that these false gods are who they say they are. Like, I don't think that these... I don't think that, you know, Dagon is a, a being Dagon. I think that the, the fallen spiritual powers will disguise themselves and lie in whichever way they can to draw people away from the true God, the God of Israel, the God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the father of Jesus Christ. So I think they will embody whatever form suits them for their purpose. So, for example, here's a list of solar deities here. Now, a lot of different cultures have a solar deity, uh, they worship the sun, and they've got the different names, and they've got the different variants on their form of worship. I don't think that all of these deities are individual spirits, all different from each other. I don't think they all have their own personalities and things. I think that every religion... Well, I, yeah, I don't think every religion worships a different sun god. I think that... I don't think the sun even... I don't think the sun is talking to these people... I think what's happening is deceptive, deceptive spirits are talking to people and pretending to be the sun in order to draw people away from Jehovah, the true God. And so all of these religions, all, the, all of the false gods, I do think there are spiritual powers and I do think that people are contacting these spiritual powers, but I think that all of these different gods are, in a sense, the same spiritual powers. It's all Satan. It's all the enemy just lying in different ways to different people at different times. Because that when the new God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made, made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever amen and same thing for the list of the moon deities they've got the queen of heavens i've got you know baal or whatever molech or marduk or apollo or zeus i guess would be the one <laughs> zeus or jupiter or whatever whatever the name of the, the particular creator god or the particular sun god is or whatever in the, in the different cultures I don't think that, and I don't think Set is a being, a being called Set. I think Set is just Satan, a lying spirit, and that he just manifested himself in different ways to different people. See, I don't think the moon is talking to people. I don't think there's a queen of heaven. It's just a mythology that has been given to people and customized for different cultures in order to deceive. So this is why the similarities between these pagan religions, because it's just you know, it's a similar lies, but it's tweaked tweaked for each different culture and yeah so the the lies about worshiping the sun and the moon and stars have proven to be an effective lie and so satan has continued to use it i guess he's up there somewhere so he wants people to look up and worship and then when people look up and worship not god <laughs> whatever it is whether the worship whether whether they are worshiping the sun or the moon or the stars or whatever They'll get an answer, but not from God. They'll get an answer from one of these evil spirits. And the fact that these lies are different in every... Oh, sorry. Yeah, so these lies are different in every culture. Just slightly tweaked versions. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb, out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, 
the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldst be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. See, and if the pagan religions were true, then they'd all be the same. But, but there's only one truth, so I think the variation between the pagan religions is proof of their falsehood. Obviously, we have a tendency to look up in order to worship, and that is where God is. So the lies about who to worship in heaven continue even to this day. You know, we've got modern cosmology and aliens and all that stuff. But, you know, different versions of different lies, similar lies, but different lies. So, for example, we've got the Temple of Set, which is an occult initiatory order founded in 1975, a new religious movement and form of Western er esotericism. The temple espouses a religion known as Setianism, whose practitioners are called Setians. This is sometimes identified as a form of Satanism, although this term is not often embraced by Setians and is contested by some academics. The temple was established in the United States in 75 by Michael Aquino, an American political scientist, military officer, and high-ranking member of Anton LaVey's Church of Satan. Dissatisfied with the direction in which LaVey was taking the church, Aquino resigned and, according to his own claim, embarked on a ritual to invoke Satan, who revealed to him a sacred text called the Book of Coming Forth by Night. According to Aquino, in this work, Satan revealed his true name to be that of Set, which had been the name used by his followers in ancient Egypt. The name used by his followers in ancient Egypt. It's all Satan, basically. And whether or not it's all of these gods are literally Satan the devil, or whether there are spiritual powers, you know, allied with Satan who are taking, fulfilling different roles. You know, Satan does have angels, so I don't know. I don't know exactly, but it's not God. So, for example, of how this might work. you got Satan comes along and talks to somebody and says, Hello, my name is Fliggle, but in the past I was known as Thor. I'm not a god, but I'm an alien from Venus who brought life to this planet by dropping, drop, dropping some of my sixth density ice cream on the ground. So, create a stone statue of a bowl of ice cream and worship me by putting ice cream on your head. So... Satan comes along and says that to somebody and the person believes it and renames themselves the Ice Creamo Supremo and starts the cult of Fliegel worship and gullible people start following and they start giving themselves over to this new god who guides the prophet of this new religion with further revelations. You know, Satan feeds this Ice Cream Supremo more revelations and the, the adepts of this new religion acquire ranks based on their obedience to the gospel of the ice cream the vanilla rank, chocolate rank, cookies and cream rank, and then finally the, the caramel almond rank. And the almonds represent the seed of creation that were present in the ice cream that their god, Fliggle, dropped to create humans. So something like that happens. You know, some obviously are a more believable story than that, but like the, the Raelians, this supposed alien, who's one of the Elohim, an alien race, comes along and says, oh yeah, we, we used to be called gods, we used to be thought of as gods, but actually we're aliens, and here's the explanation for the Garden with Eden, a spaceship, and all, all this stuff. So that's what happens, I think. It's just gullible people, or people who reject God, they, have, they listen to these evil spirits, and they get this mythology given to them which appeals to them, a version of things which appeals to them, and get told a bunch of lies about things, and they start following it, and I think that's how it works. So it's a load of crap, basically. All of these religions are a load of crap. Some of them are quite sophisticated because they've been around for a while. But it's designed to lead people away from Jehovah and Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter in which way Satan leads people away from God. He just wants to lead people away from God. So it's like the many-faced God. I've talked about this before. The many-faced God, an idea in the Game of Thrones books. So the faceless men worship death. This is the Assassin's Guild. They worship death. They believe who they believe is the only God. The cult is a syncretic religion. Syncretic religion, different religions which have, different religions which have similar elements. So its followers believe that death is unknowingly worshipped by devotees of all the religions in the world, especially uh, simply under different names. Every religion either has a god of death in poly polytheistic faiths, or has a god with dominion over death in monotheistic faiths. 
Faceless men believe that all of these gods are simply different aspects or faces through which death has revealed himself to humanity. Hence they formally refer to their deity as the many-faced god. There's no, no one symbol of the many-faced god, simply the icons used to represent death gods in other religions. So that's the way I think it is. Just all, all these different symbols, all these different names, but really it's just, there's only, there's only two. There's, there's God, and you can worship God, or you can worship Satan. I think that's the simplistic way of looking at it. And God has his way that he wants to be worshipped, and he's explained that in, his, in the Bible, and the Word of God. And Satan has a million different ways. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He just wants to tear you away from, from God, because God is life. The saint doesn't directly come out and say, Hello, I'm the devil, worship me. He leads people away slowly with whatever lie they'll believe. Slowly indoctrinates them until they're so far from God that they might accept the truth, which is that they have been worshipping Satan the entire time. Then they can make the final choice with both eyes open to either, either worship the devil or to reject him. But I think Satan wants to corrupt you so much that you feel so guilty and feel like God wouldn't want you, and you've done such bad things that God wouldn't have you back, and Satan's your only path, basically. And I think if you go far enough, it's quite difficult to come back. So that's what Satan wants to do, lead you far enough away from God that you find it difficult to get back, and then you end up rejecting God. So in Revelation 9, verse 11, we have another example of sort of this idea of different names. They had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, and the Greek tongue has his, hath his name Apollyon. So two different names for the same being, well, there's more than two, there's a lot of different names, I think. Deuteronomy 32, they sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. New gods that came up. Well, there aren't new gods being created, there aren't new spiritual powers, as far as I'm aware, being created. But there are new ideas about God, you might say, that are being created. They chose new gods. Then was war in the gates. There was a shield. Was there a shield or spear seen among the 40,000 in Israel? New gods. They choose new gods. And the king shall do according to his will. This is the, the Antichrist, I guess, in the last days. The king will do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. He's not going to regard any God and call himself God, is the way I understand it. So, yeah, this idea of there being... There are spiritual powers, and they are behind these things, but yeah, don't I don't think it is that... You know, there are... I don't think the gods are who they say they are. I think it's, it's the same spirits behind all of these different gods, I think. So there's this website here, Carolyn Ham Hamlet, exposing Lucifer's plan in the last days. But the basics of illumination and enlightenment. According to the Merriam-Webster online dictionary, illuminate means to enlighten spiritually or intellectually. Enlightened is defined as being freed from ignorance or mis and misinformation. While these definitions are accurate, it's also important to understand that within Satan's organization, there are various degrees or stages of illumination. To best understand how this works, da da da. Enlightenment is an ongoing process as the initiate within Satan's organization works his or way to greater and greater enlightenment as they evolve spiritually. The lies of enlightenment, illumination and enlightenment. The organization is based on total deception and illumination, enlightenment, is based on the lies of evolution and reincarnation, as well as the lie of their cyclic karmic laws, falsely claiming that mankind is ever evolving physically and spiritually, working towards perfection. This satanic theory, lie, is, a, is completely contrary to God's plan of salvation and redemption through Jesus Christ. Those who work within Satan's organization, particularly the White Lodge, are led to believe that through this karmic cycle of evolution and reincarnation, they are working their way to perfection, getting closer to what is called the light of the Christ. In actuality, the light of the Christ is the light of Lucifer. Lucifer is Satan. Satan is real. His light is darkness, and he is the father of lies. And those who reach full illumination are shown this truth, moving up the ranks in the organization. There are many levels in Satan's organization. 
if you think of the Freemasons with their different degrees and the, these other mystery schools, they have levels of initiation. And since the hierarchy works on a need-to-know basis, servers are given only what they need to know in order to carry out their assignment. Many people who work within Satan's organization do not advance very far past a certain level, while, while some do reach higher levels of illumination. Even fewer reach full illumination, the final stage or highest level of illumination, whereby initiates are fully enlightened, freed from all ignorance and misinformation, that is purposely put out by those in Satan's organization. Those who advance are led to believe they are advancing because they are spiritually evolving, so they are being trusted with becoming more illumined. However, the truth is that this illumination, or enlightenment, is only given to them so they can be of more use to Satan and the furthering of his plan. As one progresses through the organization, they are groomed and prepped to be ready to accept the next stage of enlightenment. Groomed and prepped to be ready to accept the next stage of enlightenment. I think that's what we're seeing going on with certain things in the world at the moment. Where the initiate, I think the Hegelian dialectic sort of works this way as well. Can people to fight each other until they're ready to give up certain things in order to get peace? Uh, ready to compromise, getting people prepped to compromise over and over, repeatedly, repeatedly compromise. Uh, where the initiate will be prided on his or her spiritual advancement, so they readily accept that it was necessary that they were lied to before, they had the full truth withheld from them because they're of their limited ability to understand the higher thought. The initiate is manipulated into believing that they weren't actually lied to, but that it just appears that way at first, as they continue to progress, spiritually evolve, and begin to understand the higher thoughts. Then they will come to understand. So yes, this idea that we, we can't give you all the information yet, and you've seen this in certain other groups today, where you know, disinformation is real, we can't tell you the whole truth, um, and it, <laughs> you probably know who I'm talking about, the, the particular group that I'm talking about. You can't tell you the whole truth because the plan that you are trusting, we, uh, the enemy the enemy can't know everything. So you can't know everything either. You've just got to trust the plan. Yeah. Full illumination. In the ranks of the organization, there are various belief systems promoted as the truth. But as one advances, they shed the former belief to embrace the higher, a higher illumination. For example, on some of the lower levels, people are taught that there is no true evil. Then there are versions that believe that in order to have good, there has to be the balanced opposition, like yin and yang. As one moves up the ranks, they are progressively illumined regarding good and evil, the true identity of Lucifer and the truth behind his plans. Initiates of the final stage of illumination learn the complete truth about the nature of the plan and the true identity of those who govern it, the fallen angels. Learn the truth that the God of the plan is actually Lucifer and not God at all. Learn that Lucifer is the literal Satan of the Bible. Learn that evolution is a lie, that reincarnation is a lie, and that humanity is not evolving, but it, but it is in a fallen state. Learn that Jesus Christ is literally who and what the Bible says he is. He really is the Savior, the only Christ, the chosen one of God to redeem and save fallen humanity. And then the initiate who knows this truth, who has been fully illumined, is asked to continue serving the plan to give their full allegiance to Lucifer, Satan, aligning themselves with Lucifer, Satan, and the fallen against God and humanity, turning their backs on God forever, and to continue to work Satan's deception, making it possible to actualize his, Satan's, kingdom on earth. In return for this faithful service to Lucifer, Satan, the initiate is promised many things, including the reward of of unfathomable, unfathomable wealth and power, a high position of world leadership, rulership and authority in Satan's, Lucifer's kingdom on earth and into eternity, and even companionship that gives one the feeling of being eternally and irrevocably loved and understood, of belonging. This is the stage I, says Carolyn Hamlet, was taken to. And once I realized the truth, and the truth was that I had been purposely lied to by those I had been serving for my entire life up until that point, I said no, and cried out to God to save me. 
Illumination within Christianity. Sadly, I have watched over the years as more and more Christians who, having refused to love the truth and having refused to heed the desperate warnings of myself, as well as the warnings of others, fall for Satan's lies of enlightenment and illumination. Although some Christian occultists use the terms illumination or enlightenment, many of them use different terms to describe this enlightenment and illumination. But they are describing the exact same satanic concept. They use terms such as activating the spirit, advancing in the spirit, awakening the spirit, developing the spirit, eating the meat as opposed to drinking the milk, getting a promotion in the spirit, graduating, spiritually speaking, manifesting of the spirit, seeking after the deeper things of God, seeking after understanding mysteries, seeking or desiring higher intelligence or greater thought, learning to move or operate in the supernatural, learning to walk in, used in the context of learning to develop spiritually. Related to these terms that Christians use to describe the process of illumination, they also believe that with their illumination comes the following perks. An upgrade in their so-called spiritual weapons. An increase in their so-called anointing or power or authority. Think of the New Apostolic Reformation. A better ability, power and authority to command angels or to command demons or to pass out their decrees. An increase in their gifts and abilities. Sometimes with an increase in authority in the physical or an increase in money or an increase in possessions or something else that they have desired and many other things that they deem to be things that prove their higher state of enlightenment. Truthfully, this process of illumination and evolution that these Christian occultists are going through is nothing more than a satanic lie that is keeping them eager to serve as the pawns of the fallen angels and ultimately of Satan. Their illumination with all of the treats and perks, real and real or imagined, is simply proof of the process they are going through as they are learning to give greater and greater permission to the demonic to work through them in order to build Satan's kingdom on earth. So, yes, be careful about these spiritual powers. So idols, yeah, we the word of God. You've got to know the word of God and you've got to read the word of God and follow the word of God and be humble. So idols. Well, we know that idols do not have power in themselves. Now unto us, O Lord, no, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where now is their God? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. They have eyes, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So is every one that trusteth in them. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes they have, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. They that make them are like unto them. So is every one that trusteth in them. It's interesting that in the last days we've got the image of the beast, and the image of the beast speaks. It's just interesting how we've got robots now which speak. I find that interesting. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, o, o house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with gold and silver, uh, with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. But thou hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives and thy concubines, and have drunk wine in them. Thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold and brass and iron, wood and stone, which, not, which see not, and nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways thou hast not glorified. So idols, I think, are just sort of the same thing as what we're talking about before. It's just a way to lead people away from God. So the idols themselves don't have power, 
But when people worship these idols, you know, they're literally worshiping an inanimate object. However, when people worship idols, I think that the spiritual powers use that as an opportunity to speak to people and to pretend that they are the idol or that they are working through the idol or that they are serving their God by making and bowing down to the idol. So it gives the, it gives the spiritual power power like you're, per, you're giving permission opening yourself up to being used by these spiritual powers when you worship an idol and you, these people who worship idols they may think they're actually worshiping the god represented by the idol but really you know the idol's just a bit of stone it doesn't matter <laughs> but the spirit doesn't care the satan doesn't care and paul stood in the midst of mars hill and said ye men of athens i perceived in all things you are too superstitious for i passed by and beheld your devotions and i found an altar with this inscription to the unknown god whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him i declare unto you god that made the world and all things therein seeing that he is lord of heaven and earth dwelleth not in temples made with hands neither is worshipped with men's hands or as though he needed any thing seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation they that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that, hath, and in that he hath raised him from the dead. So, yeah, don't worship these idols. God doesn't need you to worship idols. You can worship him directly. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. So yeah, who are these spiritual powers then? Well, we know that we know that Satan exists, and we know that he has a, he has we know that he has angels. And the great dragon was cast dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So and we know that there are many devils in the world many devils or demons you might say and we also know that these evil spirits can enter into people so jesus asked him saying to the asked the possessed man saying what is thy name and he said legion because many devils were entered into him when the, unspirit, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none then he saith i will return to my house from whence i came out and when he is come he find it, findeth it empty swept and garnished then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. The last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. So there are spirits that are, are that, there are evil spirits that wander around. And some people make the distinction between the fallen sons of God and, and the spirits of the Nephilim. You know, the, the spirits of the children, the sons of God, had by the daughters of men in Genesis 6. So some people say that you know, there are the fallen angels and then the spirits of those who are created by the procreation of the sons of God and the daughters of men, those spirits, they didn't go to the underworld and they're roaming the earth and that's what the evil spirits are. But they get this information from non-biblical sources. So I don't think we can be certain what all these spirits are and who they are and where they come from. And I don't think it really matters <laughs> that we know these things. We do know that there are different kinds of spirits, but it doesn't we don't need to know exactly what, what we don't know we need to know the details of these things, I don't think. And I think when you start believing we start thinking you have knowledge and believing things that aren't in the Bible, that almost always lead you down some wrong path. So be careful. We do know there are different kinds of spirits. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, 
Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind, this kind of evil spirit, goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. So there were different kinds. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift herself up. Acts 16, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination, which brought her masters much gain, both soothsaying. And Second Corinthians 12, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me, yet rather... Yet he rather chooses to glorify of his infirmity. Oh, sorry. So there's notes. <laughs> you know, when you re you've got the Bible software and it's got the notes that people put in. I was just reading that. So anyway, this was, <laughs> for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So there are different spirits. We do know there are different spirits of different kinds. We know that Satan has his angels, and we know there are spirits on earth. The difference between these things and exactly what the nature of all these things are, we don't know, and we don't need to know. So in the end, these spirits, though, will be no more. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. So we do know, you know so devils can enter into people. We know that Satan can enter into people. After the sop, and after the sop, Satan enter, enter, entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. So Satan, and Satan is capitalized there. I assume that's the devil entering into Judas Iscariot. And we know that Satan won't be around forever either. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented, tormented day and night forever and ever. So, yes, spiritual powers. Now, it is a hope of mine. It's a hope of mine that God intends to save all men. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. So I think, well, my hope is that all of the seed of the woman are going to be saved. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, that thou gavest me, I have kept, and, have, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. None but the son of perdition. And he is the propitiation for our sins, uh, but not ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. And the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, Ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Not willing that any should perish. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So it's just a hope of mine. I understand that there are a lot of places in the Bible that talk about being cast out and eternal darkness and eternal, eternal damnation and all those types of things. And I understand that. And I'm, this isn't doctrine that I'm talking about now. This is my hope. My hope is that God has a way to save most people. Uh, yeah, so talking a bit more about this. And it's, so in the bit, talk about the son of perdition. Jesus said, you know, none is lost but the son of perdition. John 17, we have that as well. Well, I was... Did I just read them? Yeah. So, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none is lost but the son of perdition, that a scripture might be fulfilled. Which would imply that Judas is going to be lost. However, the son of perdition is mentioned again. We know, we know that Satan entered into Judas, and the son of perdition is mentioned again in 2 Thessalonians 2, that no, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So I don't think Judas is coming back. I mean, maybe. <laughs> it's possible that the Antichrist is literally Judas Iscariot, risen from the dead. It's possible. 
But we know that Satan entered into him. So I suspect it's Satan because we do know that Judas repented. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. So Jesus, uh, Judas did repent and did admit that he had sinned. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful, faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And even Nebuchadnezzar, who said that you know he'd built Babylon by his own might and he had the kingdom taken from him, he repented. At the end of days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and praised and honoured him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand, or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honour and brightness returned unto me, and my counsellors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto, added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honour the king of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. So, I understand that no other foundation can be laid than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work should be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and that fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built upon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work should be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou send, set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So, as I said, it's just a hope of mine. I'm not saying this is doctrine. I understand that there are verses that counter this position, or at least appear to, I'm not going to make the argument strongly either way, so I'm just going to say it's my hope. It's my hope that God will save more people than we expect. Although those who reject Jesus are going to suffer more in the judgment, and they're going to suffer loss, and they'll be of lower rank in the kingdom, or maybe they'll be in one of the nations, I don't know, outside of the kingdom. You know, I have friends and family who didn't accept Jesus, Jesus as their Lord and Savior in their lifetime, I hope there's some other chance for them, or I hope that God, God has some plan, some plan that we don't know, we don't know about. You know, people what didn't understand about Jesus and the, the gospel going out to the Gentiles. That was a something that was previously unrevealed. I'm hoping that there's something like that in the future. And, but even if he does this, even if there is hope for, you know, those who didn't accept Jesus and that have died, even if God is planning to save them, which I don't know that He is. It's just my hope. But even if he does, there's no excuse not to preach the gospel. And there's no excuse to reject the gospel either. Because even if this hope of mine is true, rejecting God in this life brings torment. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried and in hell he lifted up and in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torment, torments and seeing Abraham far, afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this, 
in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember thou, uh, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus, Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest thou also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, for if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they will not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. So even if my hope is true and that God has some plan, it's still not a good thing to be rejecting God. <laughs> it's the punishment's gonna well, the, the motivation to accept him <laughs> is going to be stronger and stronger as time goes on, as things get worse and worse, and the punishment is greater and greater the longer you reject. So if forgiveness is here now, I would recommend it and recommend uh, encouraging others to accept it as well. But yes, my hope is that there is some special sin that only the spiritual powers have committed. To more, verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. All sins be forgiven, but he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. So I'm, my hope is that that's Satan. Satan is blaspheming against the Holy Spirit and my hope, you know, there are verses like this where you know, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men. I, I, I try to, I would like to think that you can interpret that broadly. That's my, that's my hope anyway, because I don't want anybody to perish. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, pretend uh, prepared for the devil and his angels. The devil and his angels prepared there, I hope, I hope that there's not many people going there. My hope is that all the warnings of eternal punishment will somehow be effective, if not in this life, then in hell. You know, with that man, in that story I just read with Lazarus in it. I hope that that's the punishment. I hope it's not eternal. I hope that they are made pure at some point. You know, while they are waiting, while they are awaiting judgment, I hope there's an end point for them, a good end point. My hope is that only the ones who take the mark of the beast, are the only ones who take the mark of the beast, are those of the seed of the devil. And that none of the seed of the woman take it. That's my hope. For I know nothing by myself, yet I am not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. Then shall every man have praise of God. So we're judging nothing before the time, just giving in my hope. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. So I know that God is smart. He's smarter than the devil and more powerful. And it seems to me, this is my argument, it seems to me like it would be a loss, it would be a defeat for God if the devil were to take souls from him. And I've got elsewhere written, um, you know, nobody can take you from the palm of his hand. And I realize that people who haven't accepted Jesus, you might argue, they're not in the palm of his hand. I don't know. But it seems to me that it would be a defeat for God if the devil were to take souls with him into eternal punishment. Or else, it would be God sending men to eternal punishment by his will, since none can resist his will. So, since his word says that God desires all to come to repentance in Second Peter chapter 3, and scripture cannot be broken, my hope and prayer is that God has a plan to save all men. And I hope that you also have this hope, and that you work diligently while you have the time here to make that happen. And if it turns out that some men go into eternal damnation, let it not be because you are lazy. I think that our entire history has been one long lesson in truth and error. The devil has lied in every conceivable way conceivable way and deceived many but as we collectively learn of god and the way the world works we push back the lies and arrive at truth the way the world works the way god works we push back the lies and arrive at truth and my hope is that the collective memory of mankind enables us in the future to no longer be deceived and to live together in peace and love worshiping god 
with the smoke from the lake of fire as an eternal reminder of the errors of the devil. Every deviation from the truth, if pursued, leads to death. And we're all sinners. Let us who are in Jesus, who are destined to rule with him as kings and priests, shine our light in the world, using the word of truth to illuminate darkness, beating back the strongholds of the devil, and run the race that is set before us in faith, remembering our eternal hope, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the great and only God, who showed his love for us, that while we, while we were yet sinners, he sent Jesus to die for us. So continue, brethren, with all diligence and patience, not being distracted from the simplicity of the gospel. Fight the good fight, standing strong in your faith, preparing yourself to have an answer for all men, instant in prayer, clothed with humility, humility uh, setting your hope on things above, always faithful to our Lord Jesus, who is our life. Now the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen.